Number eight, it is finished. It was about noon now, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Luke 23, 44-49 Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. John 19, 28-30 Number 9. Buried in the tomb Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. John 19, 38-41 Try to imagine the emotion of the disciples as Jesus' body was laid in the tomb. What's it like to go to the funeral of the one you thought would save, the one you thought would be the Messiah? John 16-7 But I tell you that I am going to do what is best for you. That is why I am going away. The Holy Spirit cannot come to help you until I leave. But after I am gone, I will send the Spirit to you. The death of Jesus, Jesus shattered every belief his followers had about who God should be. Think of the beliefs you have about God. What does Jesus dying on the cross mean for you, for your life? There's a poem here by Cheryl Laurie. You think this is what's best for us. They humili humiliated you on a cross. And we're humiliated too, because we put our trust in you. No wonder Peter denied you. Maybe it wasn't out of fear, but out of sheer bloody rage, that this is how the dream ended. How can you think this is what's best for us? We put everything we had into you, our trust. Our belief that you were the one who could save us. You offered us a taste of welcome, a hint of grace, a touch of freedom. For a moment, we glimpsed a new world, and you promised an eternity of that. And we trusted you. We're left wondering, which is worse? That it ended like this, or that you knew it would end like this, and you took us with you anyway. Number 10, the resurrection. Matthew 28. After the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. But there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, 
they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, he will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. After reading this passage, what emotions run through your mind? Does it give you hope? Are you surprised? The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the foundation of the Christian faith. Without the resurrection, the belief in God's saving grace through Jesus is destroyed. When Jesus rose from the dead, he confirmed his identity as the Son of God and his work of redemption, reconciliation, and salvation. The resurrection was a real, literal, physical raising of Jesus' body from the dead. Jesus was arrested, tried, and found guilty of claiming to be a king. His body was hung on a cross between two thieves. After his death, Jesus' body was wrapped in linen cloth and placed in a tomb with a large stone rolled across the opening. On the third day, an early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene and another Mary came to the tomb and found it empty. Sitting on the rolled away stone was an angel of the Lord who told them not to be afraid because Jesus had risen. As the woman left to tell the disciples, Jesus Christ met them and showed them his nail-pierced hands. Both the Old and the New Testament speak of the truth of Jesus being raised from the death. Jesus testified of his resurrection before he died on the cross, and his disciples witnessed his body after the resurrection. This, my friends, is something to be excited about. Number 11. Will you accept Jesus into your heart? Corinthians 15, 3-8. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to... Uh, Caiaphas, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. Jesus died for our sins. In our brokenness, we are made whole by what happened on the cross. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. As you leave today, reflect on your relationship with Jesus. The truth is that God created a perfect world, and then sin entered, and the only way back to God was through Jesus Christ, the ultimate sacrificial love. So God sent his Son, Jesus, to die for our sins. And we have this opportunity to repent and accept Jesus into our hearts. And as we do this, we will not perish, but have eternal life. Our relationship with God is restored. It has always been about this. God desires a relationship with us. This is the gospel truth. This is the gift we are given. Will you accept? If you have accepted this free gift of grace, Please stop in and speak to either Pastor Natasha or someone who is at the church office. We will pray with you. You are welcome to take a Bible. The way of the cross is the journey Jesus took in order to bring us back home to God. Peace, my friends. Thanks for coming, walking through that with me. God bless.